Pack. Healthcare. We all like to sometimes pretend that the Americans are the only ones who can't wrap their heads around the concept. Well, around the decent version of it, anyhow. But let's be honest, having a universal healthcare system on paper, as it were, doesn't automatically mean everything is peachy. Systems, no matter how well designed, and not many are all that great to begin with, deteriorate over time. Sometimes because of unaddressed loopholes, or neglect, or lack of political action, or a mix of all of those if we look at the Romanian uh, healthcare system as a case study. Since it just so happens that one of my best friends is a doctor, I decided to ask Irina for an insider's perspective on the good, the bad, and the what the fuck of the Romanian healthcare system. In this first episode, we'll be talking about how our national healthcare system is supposed to work versus what goes wrong on a day-to-day -day basis. We'll talk about the public's often inaccurate perception about the capabilities of the system, what constitutes a medical emergency, and some of the most famous attempts at privatizing Romanian healthcare in the last few decades. And before we begin, don't forget to follow us and rate the show, and also share your favorite episodes on social media. With that out of the way, let's start the show. So, um, Irina dear, what do we have here in Romania? Would you care to, to outline the nature of the beast, the shape of the healthcare sector in our uh, dear country? Okay, so um, first of all, can we at least laugh of ourselves? Can we tell people that we have already did this of course, once? Please, <laughs> for 50 minutes. Yes, of... yes, and, uh, yeah. and I forgot to press record. <laughs> So, this, so, yeah, so this is me trying to sort of remember what I said uh, the first time around, and it will probably be worse than the first. So, the guys, all of you out there, you are getting the uh, not, not, not the best version, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you had to be there. It yeah. was much better. It, it was much better. Okay, so let's, let's try this again. <laughs> Um, what I what I said in the beginning was that before um, having or, um, any sort of discussion about our healthcare and you know if it's better or worse than other countries, I I, I have to underline one thing. And the fact is that I, I don't know if it's not at all possible, like I'm not saying it, it cannot be done, but at the moment it is not mm -hmm. done. And what I'm saying is that in the countries that actually have some sort of decent healthcare system, you either have awesome healthcare for few people mm -hmm. in the, you know, in the shape of United States, or you have somewhat decent healthcare for a lot of people, but you also have big queues. Mm -hmm. So generally, when the politicians from the countries like the United States, when they want to protect the things that uh, the way things are done over there, they tend to point mm -hmm. towards, you know, but look, if you have these other options, you will have queues. And actually, that will not make things better. You will not have more access. And obviously, when the politicians uh, in the countries with the queues, when people are uh, people are upset because they ha they are on these waiting lists, uh, and they go like, sure, but um, if uh, if you want things to, to to go differently, you will end up with a system like in the United States, and then you won't be on any list because you won't ever get <laughs> you know healthcare. So at the moment, I don't think that it is possible to give everything that everybody needs all of the time instantly. Mm -hmm. So some things gotta give. And honestly, a lot of issues are not emergencies. A lot of things can be put on a waiting list. And a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, e even if you have like three weeks, four weeks uh, waiting list, are not, you know, in, in any uh, way, shape or form, the end of, you know, your life or something. Yeah. So, 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 so definitely having a waiting list is not a bad thing in itself. It's not a bad... Uh, 
thing in itself, obviously. It starts being bad when the queues become extremely long or when people find a way to bypass the queues and get in front of you mm -hmm. and things like that. But, but uh, yeah. in, in themselves are not the worst things ever. So what we have in Romania, we have a universal healthcare in the sense that uh, everybody who has a source of income, uh, either being employed or self-employed or uh, retired, uh, they, uh, they pay from their own taxes a certain amount and uh, for those taxes they are insured. What, what I can see, I am, I am self-employed, therefore I, um, I, I go and I give the amount of money to, to the you know, financial institutions uh, and what I, what I pay, I'm not sure if it's the exact same percentage for everybody, but it's somewhere around that. Uh, what I pay is 5% from my earnings, which I think is very low. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you co compare it with the fact that I pay 25% of my earnings for my retirement fund um, and considering that I really need good health care to be able to, you know, reach the age. Get to that age. Yes, yeah. yes. I think I would pay, I would pay more for health care uh, and less for my retirement fund. So, uh, and what we also have is a very non-transparent way of, um, of gathering the money because um, all these taxes, they, they go into, I don't know, the void. Uh, <laughs> the black box of <laughs> the, uh, budgeting. Yes, the black box of budgeting. So they go somewhere. And if you are a private, uh, or, you know, regular citizen, you cannot uh, actually know how much money is actually being raised from the health tax. Uh, and and, and because you don't know, every year all the politicians say that it's not enough. We don't know how much would be enough mm -hmm. or what exactly mm -hmm. are they planning to do because mm -hmm. it, that, that, that's one of the things, yes. uh, like yes. you said, lack of transparency and lack of an actual plan, plan. of action, yes. so to speak. Yes, yeah, so. yes because, uh, because we don't know exactly how much money we raise every year and um, in, in the sense that we don't know, in the sense that... Uh, you cannot, uh, in a very transparent way, actually see if that's true, what they, what the politicians say, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And um, also, we don't, we don't have a, a, a good, good way, also a quite transparent way of seeing for real what has been, uh, you know, put into the system, how, how much has, uh, you know, the, the healthcare actually uh, cost. You mean the revenue streams that make up the healthcare budget for No, 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 no. I, I mean, uh, what the, what Romania actually spent on healthcare in a year, mm. you know? Because, okay. uh, because what happens is that uh, we pay our taxes, they go into the, you know, void. Uh, and then ev every year uh, the government has a, a big fight and they decide uh, what percentage, uh, you know, from the budget. What's the lowest possible per percentage they can allocate exactly. to education and health <laughs> Exactly, exactly, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and so we know the percentage that is allocated. We, 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 we don't know because somewhere along the year you also have these reallocations. Uh, so we, mm -hmm. we we don't know ex budget rectification. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay, so we're not we don't know exactly, but let's say that this 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 is easier to to check uh, when the year ends, what what exactly has been allocated from the budget, and uh, but you also uh, this is the law that the mayor uh, the the mayors from each city and villages and whatever. They also have to put some of the the budget from the from the mayor towards the healthcare. So in the end, mm -hmm. in the end, it's very difficult to say. Uh, look, this is what has been spent, which means that at least this amount has been needed. Probably more, you know, because probably we didn't manage to do everything. But of course, you know. But this amount has been needed, and this is the amount that has been raised, and this is the difference between the two. And then uh, at least we could attempt to have a conversation in this country about would you be willing to pay more of your taxes? And the government, you know, will uh, will always match, you know, what uh, what you're willing to pay, or you know, maybe allocate more. Um, over over that but you as a citizen will will have this you know this you, you'll feel more sure that this is the, the taxes you paid and they for real have been spent 
uh, on mm-hmm. on healthcare in in our in our country, you know. So we have this problem. Uh, we also we also have a, a, a big problem, and that is that in theory our insurance covers everything. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm uh, everything but dental. Everything but dental. Yes, because I think the dental uh, uh, services are basically. A hundred percent privatized. Yes, but now, but, right? but 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 not but not I'm... not because uh, they are not insured, but because um, mm. there are no more state. No, no state. Yeah, yes, yes, that's practice. Yes, 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 that's the reason. Uh, because dentists, to, they they don't have to have a contract with the state. They can if they want to, but they don't want to. <laughs> uh, and well, they don't want to because the amount of money they will get is less than the amount of money that they can ask for without a contract. So mm-hmm. it's it's easy. Um, but uh, sure, you you still have you know like in Cluj, you have the the surgery, the dentistry surgery clinic like the BMFA and that is state funded uh, so, mm-hmm. so 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 you still have also dental services that are included so what what what, what i mean by everything <laughs> is that uh, is that uh, we have <laughs> uh, we have a list of um, of drugs that are approved by the national um, agency. And um, those are the drugs that can be prescribed to you. Some diseases are are, are on this, uh, what's called a national program. And so they are 100% uh, covered. You don't pay anything. Uh, if you have cancer, if you have diabetes, um, you know, there are a lot of other diseases. You don't pay anything, uh, of course, uh, if, you, if you decide to buy the cheapest uh, option you know because sure uh, for, for, for for every drug there are many options on the market and uh, some of them uh, cost more even if they are the same substance so um, you are 100% covered for the cheapest option um, of course this is also sometimes why people bitch about because sometimes the cheapest option you cannot find it mm, interesting that's also a whole uh, different story about what happens to mm-hmm. drugs yeah. in Romania um, yeah you you would be able to have it uh, without paying a dime if you could find it in a pharmacy. Um, mm. But this is this is also a, a different discussion that is difficult to to assess how much the problem is Romania and how much you know it's like the whole system. Uh, because uh, the state yeah. cannot make a distributor distribute something if they don't want to. And also, mm-hmm. uh, the state cannot make a pharmacy buy something and sell something if they do not want to. And it would be yeah. a problem. Uh, there will be other problems if they could. And there are some other problems because they can't. Mm-hmm. Also, another thing is that um, in Romania, some drugs are sold at a lower price than in other countries from Western Europe. Um, simply because uh, we are a poor country and they still make a lot of profit even if they sell uh, because they sell a lot even if they sell you know with a with a lower price but just because a certain drug company has has to sell to a distributor you cannot sell directly to a pharmacy you know or or directly to a hospital like that's how the system is set up right it, so... yes it's in everywhere in europe i mm-hmm. mean um, so there is a, a intermediary between the producer and the people that uh, need it. You know, the, the pharmacy or the hospital or whatever. Everyone loves middle. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. They don't. They don't do shit, and they make a lot of money. And also w- within the European Union, you can buy from whoever wants to sell to you, and you can sell to whoever you want, which sounds very democratic and nice. Until um, the distributors from Romania, they go and. And pay a lower prices because they buy for Romania, but then they don't sell in Romania, mm-hmm. and they sell to the uh, bigger price in a country that you know has a bigger price. And what you get is actually a drug shortage in uh, in Romania. But and but this is not due to the fact that the healthcare is state funded. You know, it has nothing to do with that. So uh, people who try to to say that this would go away if uh, the healthcare would be privatized, they are you know uh, eating shit as they mostly do. Another problem, uh, as I said, is that in theory, uh, our healthcare covers everything. 
And since this is impossible, this just creates frustrated people because nobody in this country yet had the, um, the ability to come and say, look, this is the list of what everybody could need in a lifetime. So like a basic package, you mean? N no, no, no. I, I mean like an all, all inclusive of everything package. Like this might be it, but, okay. but we also have this basic package. Uh, you know, of things that you definitely, definitely have to have covered because you are definitely, definitely fucked if you don't, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, like um, you can put, even if, uh, let's say, breast recon reconstruction after um, breast surgery, it, I'm sure it's very important for, for, for that person but they will definitely not die without it. So mm -hmm. you you should have, uh, let's say, cancer treatment should be on a basic package, but breast reconstruction should not be on a basic. Is it at the moment, breast reconstruction? Yes, it is. Is it, it covered? It, it, it is. Oh, okay. Only for the breast that has been cut, which uh, some people also argue because uh, sometimes you need to have some sort of, you know, in order for your breast to actually look the same, you have to have some sort of uh, intervention for the other one. And also, oh. also sometimes you have cancer in one breast, but because you test positive for a genetic test, you have to have a double mastectomy. So prophylactically, both of your breasts will be cut, uh, but only one of your breasts will be covered by the insurance because it's the one that had cancer. This is just negotiating over titties, I think. Yes, it's... sure. But I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I understand why, because it costs a lot. And it's not mm -hmm. a life-saving situation. And uh, nobody actually wants to have a hard talk about, look, this is a basic package and this is not. And also mm -hmm. things like, uh, you know, paracetamol or some shit that costs 10 lei should not be covered. I mean, you, you should have a certain amount of money that is uh, extremely low, that uh, just covering that ends up costing a lot of money because if you, if you cover a few bucks for a lot of people, you end up spending a lot of money in the end for things that you didn't have to, you know? So basically, basically what you're saying is that in order for like healthcare to be a maximum use to the mm -hmm. maximum amount of people, mm -hmm. It's, it would be more efficient to focus on making free the procedures and the drugs that are truly prohibitive in yes. terms of costs to most people, yes. rather than just uh, wasting pennies on things that people could have reasonably afford yes. on their yes. own. Yes, 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 exactly. And and mm -hmm. and also uh, having, you know, having a, a list of, of the things that you cannot wait for them and things that you can wait for them. But we don't have these mm -hmm. sort of distinctions. So we end up with uh, with what we have right now, which is that in theory, a lot of things are covered, but in, in practice, you end up not being able to do it because it's impossible. So this is this is our, our system. One other thing that is important about our healthcare system is how it is the wet dream of every politician since 1999 <laughs> to privatize the healthcare system. Because uh, for people who don't know, after uh, the Romanian revolution in 1999, a lot of, uh, I mean, everything was state owned because we were a communist country and there was no uh, private property. So a lot of things became pri privatized the idea in, in itself was good. I mean, a lot of things should not have been stayed old, but the way that the privatization took place in Romania was basically a grand theft. Mm -hmm. Theft? Theft. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, uh, the the politicians and the so-called business people at the time just like stole whole systems of our country, and in a very very few cases, a few years in jail. But then they wrote a book, and then they got off on well, good behavior. Yeah. So whoever said crime doesn't pay? I mean, they 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 were talking bullshit. <laughs> crime pays and pays so well. The, the most well-known fight uh, about privatization mm -hmm. happened during the, the years of the, the second term of President Basescu. Well, he was a quite a loud guy in general, so he decided to be loud about this also. 
He was he was from your town, so I guess yes. that, that's Constanza Swagger. I, I I I have to I have to I have to say that that is that is correct. <laughs> Representing. <laughs> Representing. So uh, he 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 said that we should privatize for first of all grade uh, grade zero emergencies or like say major emergencies. But the fact is that those were the only emergencies that were not th- those were the only emergencies that were one hundred percent covered by the state mm-hmm. because. Minor emergencies, I always think this is stupid because minor emergencies are not actually emergencies. People that, that call the national emergency number 112, uh, but they don't actually have a life-threatening condition. So for, for, for those situations, people have to send an ambulance, but it doesn't have to be an ambulance that you send for when there is a car crash or somebody has a stroke or somebody has a heart attack or somebody is bleeding to death on the floor. Uh, so, you know. Uh, but the, uh, the the people at uh, the emergency service, they do tell you that we'll be sending over a no, no, private no, no, ambu- no, they, ambulance. No, no, they don't. No, no, they, they don't. don't. But, but that, then you have to pay no. out of your pocket no. for the private no, no, ambulance? No. Yeah. It's still, you can okay, you, it's still if covered. you yourself want to call a private ambulance and you call their number and you call them for some reason that's your mm-hmm. thing but if you if you if you call 112 uh, some of the ambulances that come are actually private but you don't know that because you, there's no reason for mm-hmm. you to know that it's a, f- a service for which uh, you do not pay extra so um, our president wanted to, to to privatize also major emergencies which in general can be a, a, a problem of you know national security because if you are in a war or you know there is a plague and and you have and you have <laughs> natural disasters na- yes time. like huge natural disasters that uh, encompass more than just a tiny zone in a country uh, you end up needing those services and if you have a a, a private uh, service and uh, the the private company just goes like this is too much for me you know I, I i cannot i will just renounce my contract what you gonna do you're fucked you know yeah. so um, we had at the time a big fight between uh, president basescu and um, a, a guy in our country called dr arafat that uh, since then became a very controversial figure and some people hate him to death. Mm -hmm. Dr. Arafat is the guy who actually created the whole of the emergency system in Romania. Also, our our dear beloved president at the time uh, had... um, This was not the only great idea. He also wanted to get rid of some of the beds. He said that, you know, those hospital beds are in hospitals that are so bad that they cannot be rehabilitated. uh, And therefore, instead of, you know, putting money towards making those hospitals better, the best thing we can do is shut them down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also our dearly beloved president um, said a, a number for how many beds should we stop having. That was basically 90% of all the hospital beds in Romania. Also, it it seems just from a purely political point of view, it seems so wild that he would be like, yes, uh, this number, like, you said 90% of the no. beds. They are in such a bad condition that we just, like, we cannot do anything anymore. But, like, it was his second term. So what were you doing, you know, for the previous four, six, five years, whatever, right? Yes, To To, yes. to, to allow uh, mm-hmm. hospitals to get into such a state. Of course, yes. yeah, it, does, it doesn't ma- matter because most of the political class does not feel any repercussions from their no. actions. So, so just... just just to just to be clear we have around 120,000 beds hospital beds in Romania okay and Basescu proposed that we got rid uh, of around 100,000 beds <sighs> and 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 you know uh, he, he he just said the number that we should get rid uh, of uh, about 100,000 beds and people were like yeah but like I'm sure there's like a, a, a few hospitals <laughs> Like, oh my mm. fucking god! <laughs> you know, like people people believe we have millions of places in the you know hospital beds in around the country, and we don't. <laughs> yeah. We are about twenty million people. 
people and we have about 120,000 beds. Uh, what, uh, what our dearly beloved president wanted, and uh, we should come uh, back to this later, he wanted to privatize the insurances. Not because we don't have private insurances in Romania if we want, but the problem is that the, the companies that offer private insurances, they explain to people that right now private insurances are bad, but you know, they, they're not really worth their money. But the reason is because the state is bad and does not fund them directly to give you health care because if you actually instead of having two options you will only have one them the private <laughs> companies then the options will be they great. will become better by the sheer fact that you have no choice left <laughs> yes so 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 if you give them all the money if you stop having the option of being state funded all of competition sudden, is going to kick in <laughs> competition is going to kick in and it's going to be awesome <laughs> Yes, so that's 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 great. Uh, so uh, it it was this this this, this huge uh, huge fight between uh, President Basescu and Dr. Arafat, but Dr. Arafat only only argued about the major emergencies mm-hmm. thing. But to this day, to this day, a lot of people, even doctors in Romania, say we don't have private insurances because of Dr. Even Arafat. though we already at that time had private <laughs> insurance. And, and 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 private ambulances. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so 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 we have this. Uh, and um, at that time, I was a family doctor in a rural area. Mm. And uh, since the the private insurers uh, uh, started smelling blood, they, they they thought it was really close the moment when they actually could uh, could start accessing the private funds. Yes, and uh, so I had a really a really interesting experience. Probably you can ask about it mm-hmm. later. Uh, how uh, how they started uh, interacting with the with the doctors and especially mm. the the, fa- the family doctors that are the doctors that all patients in all people in Romania uh, are they are basically the have. interface the first level yes. of the, yeah. yes 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 every time somebody comes up with a plan their plan mm-hmm. is just like we need to give up we are we are un- incapable and we just we need to give up like nobody comes yeah. up with a plan of a real partnership with a private sector no 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 what they come up with is we need to give them all of our money and we just need to give up and this is what i'm against because uh, i had uh, a lot of fights with, with people you know of course calling me a communist or you know sexo marxist neo marxist <laughs> whatever wh- whatever the the le- term of the day um, and then, you know, calling me a lefty, like I would somehow be offended. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, I won't be offended if you call me an idiot. Why would that be? A- I mean, wh- once, wh- once I think you are a moron, you can call me whatever you want. I will not give a fuck, you know? <laughs> Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not against the idea of a private sector at all. I think you can make it in a really useful way for everybody, but as long as the state, uh, sets the ground rules uh what what are the you know how does the play uh, play field looks like mm-hmm. what you can and cannot do so you do not end up with with shit like uh, in america where you you end up with people that uh, do not qualify for insurance and you you end up with fights between insurances and uh, if if you have an, a certain insurer and that that company does not work with a certain hospital but you need the service from that hospital you do not get it and a lot of shit like that so nobody came with a plan and said like look we are going to slowly transition towards this and we will do it gradually in this way and we will first put in place this uh, you know safety pins to just be sure that uh, we, we we will not be taken over by grid the, the grid of people that is normal i mean mm-hmm. it's everywhere so uh, so basically when we have a discussion about the the reshaping or the revamp of uh, yes. the healthcare system there are two main things from which then we can derive f- f- further details mm-hmm. one what is the scope of the healthcare mm-hmm. system. So like you said, are we going to mm-hmm. provide decent service for as many people as possible or just like mm-hmm. 
we're going to mm-hmm. for fuck the poor and just mm-hmm. expensive, exclusive, extraordinary service for those who can afford it. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, the question of power. So who sets the mm-hmm. rules and who is there in case there, there are always going to be loopholes, abuses, and every system, even if you have some rules that make sense at some point, people uh, start to try and undermine it or find ways to go uh, uh, around the rules. And then who intervenes and who can say like, okay, guys, th- this needs to stop. This is how we reshape the things and so on and so forth. Uh, mm-hmm. And we don't have a, a real mm-hmm. conversation about this in the public sphere. No. no, 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 absolutely not. No, we have those who just yell, privatize everything. And if you don't want to do that, you're a communist. And uh, on the other hand, we have the people who like, no, private, everything private is bad. And if you want to do anything with the private sector, you are, you know, whatever, horrible capitalist. And like, that's the extent of the profundity of the discussion. <laughs> Nobody wants to discuss uh, what, what are the, what is the, the, the basic package that we should always provide from the state? What are the services that you cannot ever give up, like you know, merge, major emergencies? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the things that actually we do not have and actually take a lot of money to put into it, like let's say radiotherapy um, hospitals and uh, the the fact that somebody else puts in the money actually makes it worth it to have a contract with them that you you pay for the services because um, it's it, it it definitely is easier if somebody puts in the money to to put put in place. Um, the hospital with the you know technical abilities to do that and that is something that it's uh, it's very hard to take away because if somebody built uh, a hospital and they they bought the equipment for radiotherapy even if somehow that that provider is a uh, you know bad at managing their accounts and they fail even if the state takes over after is still uh, you know it, it it, it's still money, money wise. It's a, it, it's still a good thing because you have the whole thing there, mm-hmm. as opposed to, let's say, somebody who's a dermatologist and just goes like, "I want money from the state." If he goes away, there is nothing for you to to still have. Mm-hmm. So there are there are there are certain types of of um, of private money that will really make a difference. And even if they fail as a business and they go away, you still end up with something that you can take over. So it's it, it's a complicated discussion that, first of all, sh- should involve a lot of people that actually are in the system. Because most of the time in Romania, you have Joe Nobody that as a job had nothing to do with the healthcare system, but they are like, we know how to do mm-hmm. this. And they don't, because <laughs> they don't understand shit. And they, can, they they are very easily lied to. This is something also I noticed about former uh, ministry, uh, you know, uh, of, of of health. Since they did not have a lot of knowledge, they could be easily deceived mm-hmm. about why some things would work when they actually wouldn't. Okay, so now that you've so graciously outlined uh, the way the system works and also some of its uh, peculiarities, so to speak, let's get more specific and let's just, I don't know, let's, let's, let's set up a case that we can discuss. Uh, one of the things that uh, people complain mm. about, like you said, with the waiting list and things like that. So let's mm-hmm. say you've been a good girl or boy or however you identify and uh, you've been checking yourself regularly for I don't know for instance uh, suspicious lumps and one day <laughs> turns out you have a one so <laughs> uh, you go to your uh, family doctor first right uh, and they need to then direct you towards uh, I guess the lump doctor <laughs> 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 so you try okay, to call okay. for an appointment for a procedure that is covered by your national health insurance. Uh, and then um, then what mm-hmm. happens? What, what, what happens uh, with uh, many people in this situation that they complain about? 
Okay, so the part that uh, that is uh, generally difficult is not uh, having an appointment with a doctor. In in Romania, having an appointment with a doctor is not a huge problem. And a lot of people in Romania don't realize that that is a huge problem in a lot of other countries. Like if you talk with, with people from, let's say, United Kingdom or my, my friend in Holland mm-hmm. or I have a, a friend in Germany, to, to go from the family doctor to another doctor. A specialist, it's really, really hard. In Romania, mm-hmm. it is not. Uh, of course, uh, of course, if you necessarily, you know, if you want to go to Gheorghe <laughs> next Thursday, it could be, it could be that Gheorghe is out of town next Thursday, but you will be able uh, to go to mm-hmm. a doctor in a somewhat reasonable amount of time. But what you will have difficulties, uh, since you (laughs) took a lump, (laughs) I'm assuming, I'm assuming uh, we are talking about the possibility of having tumor. So you might need a CT scan or Mm -hmm. MRI scan. And this is the part that uh, is very tricky because um, you have discovered in your insurance, but all the providers are um, private and uh, Um, all of them get a certain amount of money for a certain number of CT scans and MRI scans that they should provide, you know, covered by the state insurance. Uh, Do you mean a number of, uh, so to speak, procedures per month or a sum that then they can allocate depending on the cost of each procedure? Uh, they, they They get a certain amount of money That uh, means a certain number of okay. procedures. So if you call uh, the beginning of the month, some sometimes you get an answer like, because of how the big the waiting list is, we can schedule you six mm-hmm. months from now. And you have no idea to know But if it's you true sus- or not. you suspect it isn't true all the time or most of the time or... I suspect it isn't true uh, because if you know somebody, if you know a guy or a girl, if you if you know a guy or a girl, all of a sudden <laughs> there is a place and you don't have to pay. So it is pretty clear that actually they sort of have these um, places that are covered by the state insurance. They they keep them at, at least par- partially for like friends and families and uh, you know people with uh, is it also in order to create a sort of artificial scarcity and then have people sort of forced to go to the places that are not covered where the procedure is not covered i honestly don't think so because the need is very big so i mm-hmm. I, i think they would make their money regardless but uh, they would not have this option the people that work there would not have the option of offering you things and sometimes they offer this um uh let's say they 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 have a contract with other doctors let's say oncologist or radiotherapist And they are like, if you send people uh, to us, uh, we we will always keep, let's say, 10 places mm-hmm. for your people. So the people that come from this doctor that has a contract and only sends the people to me will always be sure, no matter what time of the month, that they have 10 places that are free. So basically, they use those places to barter and to have better connections with other hospitals and other Wonderful. businesses. <laughs> Obviously, with the example I've given you with the lump, (laughs) Uh, we're talking about something that is MRI uh, and CT scans are really costly uh, procedures. But uh, I know that, for instance, even with kind of basic prophylactic things like uh, blood blood tests uh, and things like that, you also sometimes Mm -hmm. get this, oh, we you have to wait like, I don't know, two or three months. Yes, I mean uh, for the for the prophylactic tests I, I actually I'm all in agreement. There is no no need if you do like mm-hmm. you want to know like your cholesterol level and your you know even if you have a chronic disease if you have a chronic disease you know you will have to have your test. So you can schedule in advance because it is not an emergency. Okay? You know you have you you have this lipidemia 
So you know you have this lipidemia, so you schedule in advance. There is no oh, okay. reason so for you to not Okay, so basically you're saying that uh, if it's not an actual emergency, that's a reasonable uh, amount of time to wait for a, yes. something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Also, if it's if it's prophylactic, if if you if you just do a you know let's say annual checkup again, you know the end. You know you know how much mm -hmm. time has passed since your last checkup, and you know you want to have a new checkup, and you can schedule in advance. You, if you just decide today that oh my god I should have my annual checkup mm -hmm. now, <laughs> like no sorry no, <laughs> there is no reason for that. Okay, so I, I, I think it's a, it's a reasonable thing to have to wait a lot if uh, what you do is uh, prophylactic or if you are, have a chronic condition that you know in advance. So there is no reason for you not to have mm -hmm. scheduled it in time. And I'm saying, I'm saying this because as, a, as, I, as I worked as a family doctor, um, as a family doctor, you have a certain amount of slots each day. And, um, of patients you can see, basically. Of, of, of patients uh, you can see that are covered by the state insurance. You can see more of than that, either for free <laughs> or, or, or of, uh, uh, you can tax them, which is difficult to, to put in place because uh, it's, it, it, it's really hard to tell somebody why should they pay if, you know, pay, uh, patient 1 to 20 didn't have to pay anything and he's patient 21 and he's paying the same taxes, he's doing the same things, only like, why? It makes no sense. Uh, but the, the problem is uh, the number of patients. Uh, the, the, there should be a lot more family uh, doctors and they should be allowed to have less patients. Uh, if somebody comes to you with an emergency, mm -hmm. like, but again, a real emergency, you know, so some, somebody started having having uh, a fever and it, he, he like broke his uh, foot, like he wouldn't yeah. have scheduled the fever or the breaking of the foot. But a lot of people, and this happened to me a lot when I was a family doctor, they thought that the fact that their um, monthly medicine reached the, the end of the number of pills that they had, and they didn't schedule an appointment, and they realized it's their, their last pill. And they would call and be like, I have to come in tomorrow. It's an emergency because I didn't bother to make an appointment in time. And they, they, I was like, <laughs> this is not an emergency. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the fact that you didn't care enough to, to schedule your appointment is not an emergency. And there is no reason for you to not come three days from mm -hmm. now when I can actually schedule you. And uh, I, I worked in the same place for two and a half years. And... Um, I decided that, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this makes sense and this is how things should be. And people uh, should uh, actually uh, get accustomed to mm -hmm. making appointments in time and keeping them and calling if they, if, if they, they have to, to cancel and not shipping <laughs> other people's time. And uh, so I had a lot of fights, <laughs> which, uh, which is difficult because uh, a lot of family doctors don't do this because they are afraid of losing their patients. Uh, so they sort of end up doing ridiculous things. I worked in this practice where uh, the, the person that recently bought the practice went mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, on maternity leave. But the, the doctor that had the practice for a long, long time before, she did things like she would take the prescription and she would go around town and put it in the mail. What? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It does something, first of all, illegal the and insane. postman of drugs. Yes, yes. Um, so people had these expectations and I would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are upset about appointments. It doesn't matter that they don't have an, uh, an, an emergency and it doesn't matter that they could have thought about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. They are upset that they have to do this, a lot of the people. And I'm like, dude, no matter what sort of healthcare you'll have, even if you will have a privatized one, this will still happen. It only it will be worse. You will be even more yeah. fucked if you want to pull this shit, you know? As it's often the case with us, we kept blabbing for another hour. So I think it's best if we make this a two-parter. Uh, tune in next time for the follow-up. And until then, Stay safe and remain curious. Bye.